Pimp and Loma, you um, came to this from an unusual vantage point as a doctor, as a cardiologist, becoming aware of the phenomenon of near-death experience. Um, so you, I mean, just to take that a step farther, you started thinking about consciousness in, as something that manifests itself in states of clinical death. Right? Um, so I wonder what view of the self, your study of that, your immersion in that, and you've really given yourself over to that, um, has given you. Is the self an entity? What is the relationship uh, between the self and biology, and is it something other than biology? Well, oh, I was raised as, an, as an, a physician, and we thought always that that consciousness was just a product of the function of the brain. That was my opinion as well. And as a cardiologist, I was involved in many, many resuscitations. And the moment I started to ask patients who had survived the cardiac arrest, it was in 86, uh, if they had memories of the period of unconsciousness, the period of cardiac arrest, which is called clinical death. There is no circulation, no breathing. And if you don't start your resuscitation between five to 10 minutes, patients will ultimately die because of irreversible damage of the brain. And to my big surprise, within two years, I heard 12 out of 50 patients who had survived the cardiac arrest who told me about an enhanced consciousness during this period of a non-functional brain. And this started for me just the curiosity because it didn't fix it what I had learned. And um, so out of scientific curiosity, we started to study it in 88, and we studied uh, 344 consecutive <coughs> patients who survived the cardiac arrest, and 18% of them had memories of the period of cardiac arrest. And there was no explanation when you compare the 18%, the 62 patients who had a <coughs> death experience, so an enhanced consciousness, with the 82% who did not have any memories, there was no difference at all in the duration of cardiac arrest, two minutes or eight minutes, the duration of unconsciousness. If they were five minutes unconscious or three weeks in coma, the given medication, uh, fear of death before the arrest, uh, foreknowledge, religion, uh, gender. So we couldn't explain why people can have this experience of enhanced consciousness. And they have cognition, self-identity, emotions. They can have a review of someone's life with memories from, from early childhood. And in that, this enhanced consciousness, they are feeling connected with everything and everybody. It's, it's a, what they also call it, it's an experience of oneness, of unity. Everything is connected. And when you have a life review of, uh, let's say, in the cardiac arrest of two minutes, you can talk a day or more about it. Everything happens at the same time. Instantaneous, you were there. Everything is connected. And then we started to think about what happens in the brain during cardiac arrest. So we know that the function of the brain stops. There, there's no blood flow in the brain. Within two seconds, you become unconscious within two seconds. The function of the cortex is gone, so there are no body reflexes, body is no pain reflexes, the brain stem reflexes are gone. So the gag reflex, the corneal reflex, the breathing stops, the respiratory center close to the brain stem. So the clinical findings are there's no function of the brain left, brain stem or cortex. And when you have the measurement of the electrical activity of the brain, EEG, within 50 seconds, it's a flat line. And then the interesting aspect of the death experience is the out-of-body experience, that people can have theoretical perceptions, which can be corroborated later by doctors or nurses or family members, that they can tell exactly into detail what happened during the resuscitation. Right, and these are the things that make it, um, that legitimize, legitimate in some exactly. sense. For, for example, that you tell the story of someone who, who had his dentures remo removed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and later on recognized um, the, the person who had taken the dentures out and his eyes yeah. were closed. So yeah. that kind of takes this out of the realm of 
well, maybe these people are making up stories to say that there's yeah. some. I mean, there's a, there's a lot that people have done to, uh, so to take it seriously the, it's, scientifically. It's, you can, let's say this, uh, you can corroborate this theoretical perception. There has been a recent review of about 100 cases of out of body experiences, and 90% was 100% correct, which means it is not an illusion of hallucination or illusion. So for me, I would like to call it a, the ego. It's what we, in our body, in our waking consciousness or ego, uh, have during when we are awake or dating consciousness. But the people, when they have an out-of-body experience, when the brain doesn't function anymore, they have still have the self-identity. And in the higher dimension, everything is connected. And the, let's say the subject-object duality disappears. Everything is one. Well. Everything is connected. And this is what the people tell us in the moment that the brain obviously doesn't function. So where does that take you? It takes you that, um, in my opinion, the brain is not the producer of consciousness, but it is the facilitator. It makes it possible that you experience your wake consciousness in your body when you're awake, and the self or the higher self and the enhanced consciousness is the higher aspect. And so the ego is just an aspect that you can experience in your body. And people tell me, and I've spoke to hundreds and hundreds of those people. Also people who had a traffic accident or are in coma, children who were nearly drowning, uh, women who had loss of blood with childbirth, but also even your meditation or uh, really depression can have this kind of enhanced consciousness when the brain functions normally. So. Not only you said that the brain is not the producer of consciousness, but the facilitator. I mean, another way you come at this quite differently is you say consciousness actually pervades the body, right? Not, not just that the body doesn't merely it produce is just consciousness. It's coming and in. And yeah. this comes from uh, stories of people who've had transplants, for example. 